Hello everybody, it is time to talk about visual aids and their use in speeches. Technically, these should be referred to as presentation aids instead of just visual aids because any sense can be used to enhance a speech, including sound, smell, touch, and so on. But generally speaking, people use visual aids, pictures, charts, graphs. Your textbook uh, does a great job at laying out the types of visual aids. What I want to do in this brief video is talk about three things. Uh, a couple of notes on the use of visual aids in speeches in real life. Um, and then I want to talk about three quick rules of thumb for using visual aids in speeches. And finally, uh, a note on the use of visual aids in your speeches in this class. So to start off with, um, as far as speeches in real life, there are a number of speeches that I have given um, in a, uh, both in a personal capacity and in a professional capacity that have required presentation aids. Not all speeches that you're going to be called upon to give in your job or your work or your life um, will require visual aids, but the ones that do, uh, I can honestly say that I have never used PowerPoint as a visual aid for my speech, and I would encourage you not to use PowerPoint as well. Uh, as it can be unwieldy and boring. There are a lot of really good um, visual aid producing websites online, and here's three uh, that I use. Uh, um, the one that a lot of people have heard of is Prezi, P which is spelled with a Z and an I, Prezi, and it's short for presentation, and it is like PowerPoint except better. It allows you to zoom in and zoom out uh, instead of going from one slide to the next and it's all online, it's on the cloud, um, so that is good. The other one that I use most often is called Haiku Deck. Haiku is in the form of, uh, form of poetry. Haiku Deck um, is very good for um, storing simple presentations online. Um, it specializes, specializes in the use of big, splashy images, um, which are eye-catching. Uh, and it also allows you to put a few words on each slide if you want to, not very many words. Um, and both of those things are good for presentation aids. You want big, splashy images and few words. And I'll talk about why in a second. Third, there are a number of, number of good infographic generators online as well. The one I use most is called Easily. And if you, if you Google uh, easily and infographic generators you'll find it even though it is spelled kind of weird. Um, infographics are great. Um, you can get a lot of good information into one picture and that way you don't have to spend a thousand slides to uh, get your point across. Uh, so ultimately speeches in real life I shy away from PowerPoint and in other um, traditional methods of using uh, visual aids in the same way that no one ever uses an easel um, and you wouldn't want to use a whiteboard uh, if you know if you could help it. Um, I also avoid PowerPoint. Either I, I avoid PowerPoint in my seated classes, I avoid them in speeches and presentations uh, in a professional capacity as well. Three general rules is my next point for using visual aids in speeches. I'm going to talk about um, how uh, pictures are better than words is number one. Uh, next, simplicity, and three, don't rely on your aids. So first, I've already touched on the, um, the, the um, general rule that pictures are better than words. One of the good examples of this is uh, Steve Jobs in his classic um, Apple keynote speeches that he uh, used to give. Um, if you uh, are familiar with those speeches, you can almost you know close your eyes and visualize Steve Jobs in his, in his trademark black turtleneck uh, shirt, standing on a big stage, it's dark, um, big screen behind him, and there's one big picture uh, on, his, on his slide. It's a big picture of the iPhone. Uh, at no point does he have tons of words and schematics and graphs and charts and things. Just one big, splashy, uh, iconic image was all he needed uh, to help him get through his keynote. And that is um, the attitude that we should take toward our speeches as well. You don't need uh, tons of words on your PowerPoint or on your visual aid because you're already given the speech and the words are coming from you. Uh, what you want is something to uh, enhance and go along with, uh, or in other words, to aid what you are uh, speaking and aid the audience's comprehension of what you are saying. Uh, so use pictures. 
Uh, second, um, so first, uh, words are not as good as pictures. Secondly, um, you want to keep your visual aids simple. You may have to use some words, but you know, keep them simple, keep them short. Um, do not use any unnecessary animations. There was a point in like the early 2000s when everyone was really infatuated with PowerPoint and all of its animation capacities and their like crazy slide transitions and things were moving around on the slide for no reason. And that was just distracting, so avoid that um, if you uh, can. Um, and you want to be easy on the eyes, uh, be kind to old eyes, and make sure you have high contrast. Uh, you know, I can't think of a, of a good reason not to have a white background and black text. Um, you know, but if you do play around with color, just make sure you don't have like yellow background and laser lemon yellow color uh, for your text. Anyway, the textbook goes into a lot of, a lot of more uh, finer points on that, but um, for me, I just say keep it simple. Third, and perhaps most importantly, you don't want to rely on your presentation aids. You are the speaker, you are giving the speech. The presentation aid is behind you, uh, uh, typically speaking, if you have a screen. And um, so it is a mistake for you to ever turn around and look at your own slide. Uh, the, the audience is um, going to look where you look, and you want the audience to be focused on you. Um, so if you turn around, um, you're looking at the slide, that encourages the audience to take their attention off you. Also, you've taken your attention off the audience, you've turned your back to the audience, and that's a uh, big no-no. So um, you need to be able to give the speech completely without the use of your uh, presentation aid because you know that could actually be the case. You may go into the place where you're going to be speaking and there's a big electrical storm, the power is out, you can't pull up the computer, you can't log on to your whatever, um, that where you, where you stored your presentation online. The show still must go on. Um, so it's a mistake to rely over much on your presentation aid. Um, because push comes to shove, you can't bring that presentation aid up, you still need to be able to give the speech without it. And you always should be able to, because the aid is not as important as the speech. The speech can always stand alone if it is a good speech. Finally, don't rely on your visual aid or your presentation aid as a form of organization um, or to keep you on track. You shouldn't have to look at your slide to remind you what the next point is. Uh, and I think a lot of times people make that mistake. You should have your organization uh, on your note cards that you have in your hand, uh, and that is all you should need. In review, I've talked about uh, the use of visual aids in real life, and I've talked about three general rules. Um, those are um, images better than words, keep them simple, and don't rely on your um, visual aids. Now, in this class, we do use some visual aids, um, but we actually don't give you uh, much occasion to use PowerPoint. Um, a little bit difficult to get that in uh, to a uh, webcam video, obviously. But in your first speech, you did use objects um, to introduce yourself. Uh, the demonstration speech coming up, you will again be using objects. And um, so these are pretty, uh, pretty easy to get into the frame. Uh, and you can, um, you know, you're demonstrating some skill to us. And so you will uh, use the things that you're demonstrating uh, to show us. And some of you may use... Uh, um, diagrams or, or um, other things you've printed out and, and hold up to, to show us in. And that's acceptable from time to time. In the informative speech, there is no visual aid requirement. The assignment sheet does say um, it's advisable to use one, but uh, not required. Um, and so this is where you might be able to play around uh, with some, some other images and things that you pre-prepare. And there is no visual aid requirement in the persuasive speech. So uh, this is a chapter that is interesting, important to think about, because a lot of times when you are given speeches, it's nice to have a presentation aid to enhance the speech. Um, but generally speaking, what we mostly focus on in this class is the art of speaking itself um, and training you to be able to deliver a good speech without too much reliance on the bells and whistles that come along with uh, the presentation aids. I do encourage you to get online, um, Google some of those services I mentioned, including Prezi, Easily, and Haiku Deck. Um, I'm, I, you know, I hesitate even to mention those in a, in a YouTube video because as soon as you mention something, it's immediately outdated, but I have been using uh, each of those for a number of years, and uh, um, they serve me well. So I hope that uh, they serve you well 
as well. I hope you have a good week, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.